Welcome back everyone to a first look at this game that I'm really excited about. It's called Big Ambitions and it's going to be released on early access on Steam in about a week, around March 10th. I'll put a link down in the description so you can check it out and wishlist it for yourself. Uh, I have been fortunate enough to get my hands on uh, a beta of it and I just wanted to play through it a little bit. I actually recorded a first look yesterday as I was experiencing all of this for the first time. And when I went to edit the video, I found out that it was pretty heavy on the resources and it was bogging down my computer to where the graphics didn't look very good. So I had to make some adjustments in my screen recording software. I think I've got it all set now. So with that said, I have played about an hour, hour and a half of this game. So I'm at least a little bit familiar now with what we're looking at. So I'm going to show you some of the kind of the key aspects of the game. Talk about uh, it's got a roadmap. You can click on discover the roadmap here and it'll actually give you um, a link to everything they're planning and when it plans on coming out. But the, the game already has a ton available to it. So I'm excited to dive in. It's kind of a Sims 4 slash business tycoon type thing. It's got many of the elements of a Sims game but with the added aspects of being able to buy properties and invest and, and build a business and having to do all of the menial tasks involved and hire employees, it's really very cool and exactly the kind of game that I love to play on here. So let's go ahead and dive in. So for the purposes of what we're doing here, uh, we are going to play story mode because story mode will kind of give you a tutorial. Your uncle, who is kind of your early benefactor, is going to give you some next steps and tell you exactly what you need to do when so you can kind of walk through the different aspects of the game once you get your feet wet once you know what you're doing which i'm not there yet then custom game makes sense as a full sandbox experience with no limitations on your progress uh, so we're going to go ahead and start and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, create our uh, avatar now i will say this there are not a lot of options right now as far as the uh, customization of your avatar. I'm sure they're going to be more coming down the road. Um, I think I'm probably supposed to put a last name too, but uh, right now they're not a lot of options, just a couple of different options as far as face and uh, things like that. You do have some different hairstyles you can do. And what's cool is uh, once you get into the game a little more, you actually have the ability to, I'm not that muscular, um, you have the ability to design uniforms for your employees at your different uh, places that you own, which is really, really cool. And I think that's probably about as close as we're gonna get to to me. Um, only a different, couple of different color options that you have available to you. And this is basically how you're gonna be dressed when you're off duty, when you're not at your job or at your business that you're working, so. So here's how the, the storyline starts out. You're gonna get introduced to your uncle He's going to give you a little bit of money to get started and talk to you on the phone and give you some information on what to do. But he's not going to give us a whole lot. But just enough. It, it really is a tutorial is what this story mode is. So Uncle Fred's going to call. Hey, I hope you're feeling better. Anyway, I talked with a friend of mine, Richard. He owns a bunch of buildings in Hell's Kitchen. And he's kind of a big shot. Well, the bottom line is uh, he has a cheap apartment that uh, you could probably afford. It's not much, but it'll do. So uh, right off the bat, we are in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, there are several neighborhoods here, and I'm going to show you. Click on Google Maps. Uh, you can actually see the neighborhood that we're currently in. You can drag around. Every one of these buildings uh, is something that you can purchase in the game or you can enter in the game depending on what it is. So for example, here are the residential places that are available. And each one of those you can click on, you can see if it's available for rent, you can see who owns it, what neighborhood it is, how big it is, a uh, lot of information there. Uh, we can see the retail spaces here, click on every single one of them. So you open one of these in Bizman and it gives you the basic details about the business. Uh, the building is not for sale right now. It tells you what the daily rent is, tell you what the customer capacity of that building is, what its market value is, all sorts of things like that. Uh, office spaces, you can see here, uh, and then warehouses. 
and those will come in handy, I'm sure, down the road. Uh, and then there are appliance stores, banks, car dealerships, furniture stores, hospitals, importing and exporting, marketing agencies, office supply door stores, recruitment agencies, schools, and wholesale stores. And every single one of those matters in this game. If you want to get uh, a new refrigerator for your house or for your apartment, you have to go to the appliance store and buy the refrigerator and take it back to your apartment. Uh, if you want groceries, you have to go to the grocery store and buy groceries so you have food. You have energy, food, and happiness are the three things you have to manage on here. So you don't have to worry about going to the bathroom, things like that. But it is kind of a, a watered-down version of Sims in that way. But then, you, like I said, you still get to decorate, all those sorts of things. When you need products for your business, you have to go to the wholesale store and buy that stuff or go to the furniture store, the office supply store and buy the shelves that you need and the cash register that you need. It's all a part of this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this apartment and we're gonna rent it out. Um, cool fe uh, features of this game like that. If you run in front of a, run in front of a car, they will beep at you. And I've noticed too that once you get a car and you park it, uh, you can actually block traffic and they get really annoyed with you when that happens. So just li cool little things like that add to the immersion for me. I think the graphics are great for a, a early release game that's still got a long way to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, hit rent. Daily rent, $44, which isn't that bad. You'll find that the money, you can go pretty far with the money. Um, especially once you get a loan. Uh, so right now, all I've got is a bed. I have nothing else in this apartment. I'm gonna have to buy things like refrigerators and stuff, but for now you're gonna sleep. You can pick how long you sleep and it'll tell you exactly when you're gonna wake up based on that. And then you get, after midnight, you get a summary of the day, how much money you brought in or lost uh, at your business or at your work, things like that. And, uh... I also transferred a couple of bucks to your bank account because uh, I want to make sure you get something to eat, okay? Promise me. So we got to go buy some food. Um, you'll notice that we didn't just pay the $44 in rent. We had a security deposit we had to put down as well. So um, now we're going to go to the, uh, the appliance store where we're going to buy a fridge. We're going to place the fridge and then we have to go to the supermarket. Okay, so we are heading into the appliance store. Oh, they, they don't open for three hours. So... You can sleep on benches while you wait. And once you get a car, you can actually sleep in the car. So uh, we're going to sleep for the needed amount of time until the appliance store opens. And I guess I should have probably checked that before I went uh, to the store. So uh, we're going to buy our fridge, 1800 uh, And then we actually have to check out. And if there are people in front of us, we'll have to wait in line behind them. So even the tiniest of menial things that have to be done, uh, you have to deal with. All right, so we're back to our residence now. And now what we need to do is place the fridge. Uh, you right click, you can rotate it. I'm just gonna stick it right there for now. Uh, we don't have anything in the fridge. So now we have to go to the supermarket. And one of the things you'll find with the supermarket is not a lot of options. Basically what the supermarket has is frozen food and fresh food. Uh, the fresh food costs a little more, but it will fill more of your food needs. So it's cool, it's right here on the corner. Everything's pretty accessible, as is the case in a big city, city like New York. So there you go, frozen food, $6. Oh, we have to grab a shopping basket first. Like I said, all the little details uh, they kind of account for in this. Uh, so then let's go over to the fresh food. I think those are in this here. Those are $8 each. Uh, I'm going to stock up as much as I can because you'll go through this stuff and it gets kind of annoying to have to keep going back to the grocery store uh, because you didn't buy much of it the first time. So uh, now you see I've got a little paper bag there. So just little things like that really sell this for me and I, and I appreciate them. So a couple of other really cool things I'll tell you about the game as we're dropping off our food. When you play in sandbox mode, you have a lot of control over, okay, we're gonna put that stuff in the fridge. Uh, there, I ate my food. So let me go ahead and let the next thing happen hey, here. Kid, I've gone ahead and paid your first rent, but that's it, okay? You need to get out there and get a job, anything at all. You just need a salary right now. 
All right, so we're gonna go down to that same supermarket we were just shopping at, we're gonna get a job. Um, so when you play in sandbox mode, you can set the starting age. You're 18 years old when you start or whatever age you want. You do age in the game, um, but what's cool is you can set the number of days. I think the standard is 60 days equals a year on this game. Right now you see I'm on day two, which is a Tuesday, but you can actually make it to where it's 365. And you can change all the multipliers as far as how much things cost, the money. So you can actually, while right now it's it's a little more of a condensed experience, you can actually make it pretty much real to life as far as how much things cost, how much work you have to put into it, uh, which can really, I think, probably get tedious after a while. But um, so I start tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, I've got a little bit of time to kill until then. So it's only seven in the morning. You can kind of get that from the ambiance. It's one of the, another li really just little subtle thing that I like about the graphics here is you can kind of tell what time of day it is by looking at the shadows, by looking at the lighting, things like that. It's 7.30, so I'm a little early for work. Even looking in the windows here, you can kind of see how it's early in the morning. So what I can do is I can go to one of these counters, I can assign myself to it, uh, and then I can fast forward time until my shift starts at eight o'clock and then you can actually sit here and you know kind of go through the motions of actually interacting with employees and stuff like that or you can just time machine till the end of your shift which is really kind of the way to go we're just don't we all wish we could do that in life right just time machine to the end of your shift uh, so we're going to go back home we're going to eat we're going to sleep we're going to come back do the grind again and then we should have enough money so now you see total profit. That is the amount of money I made minus the money that I had to spend on my daily rent. Uh, we're gonna consume fresh food. We're all set to go. It's six o'clock, so we're a little early for work again, but we'll go and do the exact same thing we did the first time. All right, we have reached the end of our next shift. We just made another $156. Well done. You're a chip off the old block, just like your dad. I think he was probably just about your age when he started his first business. Look, if you need a loan to start something, I got a friend over at uh, Jensen Capital. His name is Larry, okay? That's who you ask for. And be sure to say hi from me, your Uncle Fred, okay? All right, so Jensen Capital is just one of many. I mean, you can see here there's four-star gift shop. There's kebabs, kebabs. Uh, I just, I love the it really feels like you're in a city like there's there's a real like identity to it and you're going to have businesses you're going to compete against uh, and there's web development agencies and there's uh, advertising agencies that you deal with and all these sorts of things and right now we're going to sit down and we're going to get ourselves a loan from larry looks like we could actually ask for investments at some point too so we're going to ask for fifteen thousand dollars our total daily payment on that's going to be 74. That's not bad at all. Doesn't look like I could tell him that my uncle said hi. That's okay. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to find and re uh, rent a retail building of a maximum 75 meters square in the garment district using Google Maps. So we're going to click on retail space. There you have it. And if I remember right, there is one right over here by... Uh, where we live and it happens to be 75 meters square So that's perfect. Let's go ahead and set that as our destination and I don't want to sleep All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go now to 49 3rd Street. Uh, we're actually pretty tired and pretty hungry uh, So I'll go ahead and rent the building uh, But then I'll go ahead back home. It's gonna be nice because work's gonna be like right next door now So that's gonna cut down on some time And we're about to get a car too, which is going to help with some things. Uh, so we're going to head rent the building. Thirty-eight dollars is the daily rent. So now we're up to expenses of about a hundred a day, hundred and forty a day when you figure the rent on our uh, apartment as well. So we'll start the new business. Now we're going to choose what type of business we want to start. And you see what's available, and it gives you some details. How many competitors are in your neighborhood? What are the primary products? that you would be offering with that business. And I believe other businesses will become available once we get a, more of an education. We're gonna have to take classes down at the business school to be able to do that. No competitors for gift shops, which is why they're having us do that. So 
VTH Cheap Gifts is going to be the name of our business. Uh, now, now we get to open up a, a bunch of new information here, and I love the, the attention to detail in this. Um, insight, traffic index, marketing, your satisfaction by your customers, the number of customers you've had, your capacity per hour, uh, your inventory and pricing information. You're going to have your business schedule for when you're open and closed and whether or not you have employees that are scheduled to, to work during those times. You're going to have delivery contracts, marketing, uh, and then of course your settings. You can choose a logo for your business. Uh, I, just, I just love all these kinds of things. I don't like the color of that logo. Um, so we're going to go with something a little more like I want. You can actually choose fonts. Really just the, the amount of customization is so, so cool to me. Uh, EconoView is right here. It shows you all your, uh, in tr your transactions uh, per day, your business, your ongoing expenses. So you can kind of look at your budget, your personal budget. Uh, there's our loan and how much time we have left on paying that loan off. And if we had the money, we could just do a lump sum uh, payoff of that. All right, our next job is, well, first let's quit our job at the supermarket. Then I need to get some sleep. Probably needed more sleep than that. Oh, so you're a gift shop owner now, huh? Yeah, very good, very good. Now we've got some shopping to do. We'll get you some furniture and uh, some really nice products to sell in there. And uh, I also wanted to mention I uh, recently invested in a car dealership and we found kind of an old wreck of a car in the workshop in the back, but it still runs. It's not much, but it's yours if you want it. The keys in the glove compartment. Seems like a bad idea to leave a car with a key in the glove compartment in New York, but okay. Um, all right, we're eating. We're good there. It's kind of the middle of the night, so a lot of places aren't going to be open right now, so we're going to have to let sleep till morning. There's our daily summary. Uh, now, driving, you might think, well, okay, all you're going to do, and well, let me go back in and, and eat first. Um, let's grab some frozen food to get that food up a little bit. Uh, you might think, okay, well, you're just going to click on the car and then you're going to tell it where you want to go. No, you actually have to drive the car. Uh, and it's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a little getting used to. You use the arrow keys to drive the car. But it is nice to not have to run everywhere. Uh, and you're able to load the trunk up with all of the things that you're getting, which makes things a lot easier too. Uh, where is it? Oh man, it's purple this time. The last time I played it was a blue car. I'm not a fan of this one. So you'll notice here it's a Honda Mimic or Hunza Mimic. I found the car. Good. Now, don't get any parking tickets. As I said earlier, it's time to pick up some stuff for your new store. You can use your new car or continue running around with the hand trucks. It's up to you. So you see here, uh, you can sleep in your car. You can sell the car. Uh, you do have to buy gas for the car and you have... Uh, this button here that tells you when the car is going to need the car is going to need maintenance, repairs, things like that. Uh, now this reminds me of something else that's really pretty cool about the game. If we go to our persona page here, now we can get information about ourselves. We're 18 years old. Our net worth, energy, hunger, happiness, uh, and and what bonuses we're getting, uh, and how we got those bonuses. And now we have these personal goals. There are 99 of them that can be achieved. Things like run a 100 meter square apartment, run five successful retail businesses, own a vehicle worth $15,000, all the way down to things like spend at least $5,000 on gasoline or $10,000, reach skill level of 75% for an employee, become hospitalized 20 times, uh, hire and schedule at least 20 HR managers, spend a million dollars on interior designing, get 250 parking tickets, celebrate 150 50th birthday. You can hire programmers. I mean, there's so many things. Pay $20 million in taxes. Taxes. Complete taxi rides. So it gives you a sense of what you can look forward to in the game and what all it has to offer. Uh, all right. So we're going to start driving here. And when you run into other vehicles, it does damage your car. And I guess eventually you're going to need repairs. And the harder you hit them, the worse it becomes. And uh, you'll see. Oh, I just ran a red light. I don't think anybody cares, though. So we're going to go to Square Appliances. 
And it's just up, down, right, and left on the arrow keys to drive. It's really not that hard. I'm not going to wait for these people, though. All right, so here's where it gets a little tricky because there's no... Yeah, I'm, I'm totally breaking all kinds of laws here. Uh, there's no real good spot to park in some of these places. In some places, you have to pay to park. In other places, it's free, and it'll tell you. It'll also tell you if you're illegally or legally parked. So there, we're legally parked, but it's $8 to park here. So we're going to go ahead and park our vehicle for 8 bucks. There's the subway right there, which you can actually take the subway to go to other stations and get to other places quickly. So that's pretty cool, too. I really like those little kinds of things. And it looks like the New York subway, too, right? I mean, like, that's what the signs look like when you're on the New York subway. Just these people really did their homework, and I appreciate that a lot. All right, here we go. So we need... Uh, we need a stack of shopping baskets. We need a cash register, a cabinet, and a rounded shelf. There's a rounded shelf for $1,200. we are going to buy one of those. Uh, I think we need to get a hand truck so we can put all this stuff on here at once. There we go. Um, cash registers are over here. Perfect. Uh, we need a stack of shopping baskets. And then we need... What's the last thing we need? A cabinet. Cabinet with drawers. All right, we got everything we needed. 2,770 total. Let's go ahead and pay for all of that. Stacked up nice and high. Now we're going to take it out to our car. Stick it in the car. Go ahead and get in the car. And drive to the business. So like I said, I mean, you have to do all the little menial tasks, but I really appreciate that. And I think once you get further in the game, a lot of that stuff is going to become automated because you're going to be able to hire people to do a lot of those things, like get the uh, products you need, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run into these other cars. I'm actually a very good parallel parker in real life, but this is saying I'm illegally parked at the moment. So there we go. All right, so now we need to manage the storage in our car. And the first thing we need to do is click on the hand truck. And then when we click on all this stuff, it's going to put it on the hand truck. So we can bring it inside. Oh, wrong place. My bad. Didn't mean to uh, intrude upon your business. Let's go next door. So here's our business now. Uh, so obviously you can see there's nothing there. We do have a restroom. We have a little storage area. And that's about it. So we're going to start placing things. Let's place our rounded shelf. I guess we'll stick it right there. Uh, our stack of shopping baskets can go right here by the, by the door. Uh, cabinet with drawers. We're going to place, I guess... I don't know which way we need to go with this. Because we need to place the cash register on top of that. Okay. So it looks like we've done everything we need to. Oh, very, very nice. Starting to look like a real store now. Next, we have to buy some things for you to sell. And for the time being, I have to go to a wholesale store, but... Eventually, down the road, you'll do a whole lot better by importing directly from the manufacturer overseas. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and grab the hand truck. Uh, we're going to go now and buy a box of cheap gifts and a box of paper bags. All right. We've made it to Metro Wholesale. Oh, I don't want to sell. Uh, I can't sell a vehicle with cargo. Good. I didn't mean to sell the vehicle anyway. I meant to hit park. All right. We're in Metro Wholesale. Let's grab a hand truck. Uh, we're looking for cheap gifts. There's cheap meal clothing, soda cans, salad, fresh food. So there's a lot of things we can get here. Burgers, frozen food that we'd be able to sell down the road. But right now we're interested in cheap gifts. 200 of them are going to run us 1,500. Uh, and then 1,000 paper bags for $176. So a total of $1,650. We're going to go ahead and check out. All right, back to our business we go with our products. Now we have two hand trucks. 
Because apparently they just let you take the hand truck. Told you I could kind of parallel park this vehicle. All right, let's go ahead and manage our storage. Again, our hand truck there so we can load this stuff up. We're not taking it to work though. We're taking it, or to home, we're taking it to our business, which I completely forgot where it is. It's over here. And once again, I went to the wrong place. <laughs> All right. There we go. So what we want to do now is we want to place this stuff. So here's our cheap gift. Let's place those. Wait, no, no, no. We need to stock the shelf. There we go. Great work, kiddo. Now it's time to open up and start handling some cash, making some money. I'm crossing my fingers. All right, so it's too late at the moment. We're going to open in Biz, Bizman. We're going to set our schedule. Uh, it is Friday, so we're going to actually start by opening on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, and then we'll set hours. Actually, you can just share the schedule for all, all days. Um, and we'll go... Eight to eight to four. That works for now. Okay, it is time for our first day of our new business. We're gonna eat some food. We're gonna go to the cash register. And basically it works exactly like it would for your job. You just assign yourself. We're gonna fast forward time to the start and we're going to start seeing them seeing people come in we can time machine to the end of the shift if we want but what's cool is you can actually get a sense of did they just walk out without paying um, you can get a sense of what people are thinking about your business when they come in they'll make comments about things like what they think of the floors what they think of the space what they think of the products but right now we just don't have anybody coming in to shop. There we go. So let's see what they say and what they think. Uh, they, they had something that they said already, but perfect. So let's go ahead and time machine to the end of the shift and then we'll see if we get any insight. So there's day one in the books. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Bizman here. And we're gonna see our traffic index. We're getting a little bit of satisfaction so far. We can see how many sales we made the first day. Um, let's take a look. You can set the price here. We can you know, set it higher, set it lower. We can lower the price. So it looks like we have 172 left. So we sold 28 on day one. That's not bad, really. If we drop the price, we might sell even more a little faster. So I want to take a look in Bizman because one of the things that a lot of people say early on is things like they complain about the floors and stuff like that. So obviously investing in things like uh, the floors and walls of your business will increase its value. Adding furniture like tables, bins, loudspeakers, etc., will have a positive effect. So if you put some music playing, it's going to help the ambiance of your store. Monitoring your employees and customers in building can give you more insight. Uh, cleanliness. Uh, your pricing, all of that eventually we'll get data on that once we've had the business long enough uh, to ha get a little bit of a sense of those things. But for now, we've got to go and uh, we're just going to kind of do the daily grind here to get through the, the story mode. So we're going to uh, sleep again till morning and do all of it one more time. So now we see our total profit. So the nice thing is it comes in daily, right? So you're paying rent daily, you're making money daily. All of those sorts of things. Uh, we're getting low on food, but that's okay for now. I'm gonna grab our food, head out the door, get ready to open up the shop. And we're gonna assign ourselves. We're gonna fast forward to starting time. I do wanna see what people say when they come in, so. All right, personal goal achieved. One Run, run one successful retail business. Man, an hour in and nobody's coming, there we go. These walls and floors are so ugly here. So there you get a sense of what people like, what they don't like. They're not going to spend a lot of time in the store just because there's not a lot in the store except for these cheap gifts.
Okay. Well, look at you, hustling around and stacking cash already. I tell you, your dad would have been so proud. I think it's time for your first hire. And don't forget to take that course at the Business Administration School so you know what you're doing, all right? All right, so now we need to complete a course at the business school. We need to start a recruitment campaign. We need to hire a new employee, which will free us up to do some other things. So um, I'm going to do all of these parts, and then we'll probably wrap up this first episode. But um, with that in mind, if you do like this game and you want to see me continue this playthrough and get a little bit more of a sense of the game, please do me a couple of favors. Number one, hit that like button. Uh, and then leave a comment and tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of, what you have questions about. Uh, those things will really help the channel and help me to know that you want to see more of this. But uh, we're going to go to the business school. Uh, I guess I actually need to um, close the business for today because I'm not going to be there working. Uh, yeah, VTH Cheap Gifts is open but has no employees assigned. So let's go into Bizman real quick. Uh, and we're gonna go to the schedule and we're gonna shut down the business at least for the time being until I can manage the other things that I wanna do here. And then I need to find a place to park and we need to go to business school. And the business school works kinda like everything else. You pay daily, you, you invest hours and you have to do a certain number of hours to uh, complete a course. And the, and the different courses are gonna unlock new features for you in the game. So let's go into the school here. Uh, we're going to do basic management. You need 10 hours total invested. And it looks like because of the time we arrived, we're able to do the whole thing. It's going to cost $300. Uh, so let's go ahead and study. Get that course taken care of. It's uh, You're too exhausted to move at full speed. So now we're, we're walking sadly back to our car. Um, so we'll have to wait until the next day now to be able to, where did I park? You ever have this happen in real life? You can't remember where you parked or you're so exhausted that you're walking with your head down, looking like a really sad person. Uh, so we're going to go, oh, no, don't collapse in the middle of the street, please. Oh, no. Oh, oh I'm being taken to the hospital. So that's what happens when you pass out and don't, don't feed yourself and don't rest. Local authorities transported you to the hospital to recover. That's going to cost some money. All right. Thank you, hospital people. All right. So now my poor car is, oh my gosh, I'm like 800. I'm a half a mile away from where I need to be. All right. I'm a little disappointed I can't go in the church. Would have enjoyed that. But it's really cool that they have it there. Get a little bit of a kind of a St. Patrick's Cathedral vibe there. But yeah, I don't think you can go in it. But man, isn't that cool that they, they bothered to do the architecture for the church? I just That's cool. I like it a lot. After a long journey, we are finally arriving at Anderson Recruitment Corporation. Where we're going to sit down with one of these recruiters. And we're going to ask them to get us a new employee. Uh, so... It's for VTH cheap gifts. What skill do we value? We want customer service. We can choose age groups and number of candidates. And the more candidates we have them give us, the more it's going to cost. So right now we're only worried about one. And the longer you give them to deliver it, the less it will cost, all the way down to only $50. So this is all about managing expectations, managing demand that you need. In this case, we're going to say one day. Um, we can do new advertising campaigns and or, uh, recruitment campaigns. We don't need any of that right now. So uh, for now, we're going to have to wait a day now to let this all unfold and get our new employee. We received a new message from Anderson Recruitment Corp. Here we go. Annabelle Moss, she wants $32 an hour. Uh, she's 50% at customer service, not so good at cleaning. She uh, highly desires to have a full-time job, and she does not want cleaning ships, apparently. So we're going to go ahead and hire her. Uh, so now what we need to do is we'll need to go in and schedule her. So let's go to our Biz BizMan app. Uh, we need to go back to our schedule, and we need to figure out where we want to give her 40 hours a week. So let's say, I don't know, we'll, we'll go kind of a traditional Monday through Friday setup. 
8 to 4, and we're going to schedule her for all of that. There we go. 40 hours a week. Perfect. So that is all set as we want it now. Well, look at who's the boss. You did a good job on that hire, kid. I know having an employee takes a big cut out of what you're taking in, but it also gives you extra time. Time to uh, start cleaning up these floors. Oh, man, they're nasty. <laughs> all right, so we're going to wrap it up right there. Long way to go, but I wanted to give you at least a first look at what to experience with this, but I think there's so much more. We really just are scratching the surface of what this game already has to offer, even in early release. So like I said, I'll put the link down in the description to the Steam page where you can wish list it and it will be available in about a week. So be watching for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.